I don't want to bury the lead. Let's go to Nikki Rod and yeah. pick right away. Did did that go the way you thought it was going to go? Dude, it, the finish did, but I mean, who would have ever expected the takedowns on Nikki Rod on, on a three-time NCAA champion, Michael Pixley? Like, I, I, I thought maybe he'd get a wrestle up or a sweep, but starting on the feet, smacking hands, and getting those takedowns he got, for me, just blew my mind. Yeah, I, I think everybody expected Nikki Rod to get the W. What I like you said, what I don't think that we all expected was for him to be able to out wrestle Pixley as assertively as he did. Like it wasn't really a question about who was the dominant wrestler. Nikki Rod totally dominated the wrestling. And that to me, that surprised me. I thought that Pixley would have the edge. And, and honestly, I thought he would have a strong edge in that yes. one part of the game. Like and if he could play the the rules correctly, if he could Play for the points. If he could play for the decision, I thought he might have a shot to beat Nicky Rod. But I knew that if Nicky Rod got on top of him and locked his hands, it was just going to be a wrap. And another part to it is I think, I don't even think Pixley thought that that was going to happen. And when it did happen, you can almost see it in his face like, oh, shoot, I'm on my back. And then this is where Nicky Rod is the best. When he gets in that top position where he locks his hands in the body lock and starts doing what he does with his passing and his mounting, and you see it like the first time, maybe he thought it was a fluke. And then the second time he got him down, you saw in Pixley's face like, oh, man, I just got taken down. Like, this doesn't happen to me in training. This doesn't happen to me often. It might have flipped a little switch in his head. Yeah, it seemed like there was a turn in the match, too. Like, it took Nikki a little while to get to those. It's almost like it took him a little while to get to the knowledge that he could out-wrestle Pixley. But yes. as the match went on, his you could feel his confidence rising. You feel Nicky Rod's confidence rising. And then he just started moving through him. And For I, I sure. thought that was super interesting. Yeah, and you got to remember, too, he is an NCAA three-time champion, right? And Which is, means you're an it does mean you're an amazing wrestler. But there's a lot more to wrestling than takedowns and takedown mm -hmm. defense. There's pinning and reversals and things like that. And maybe some NCAA guys are best once it's on the ground and they're pinning people. And Nicky Rod, you know, he, he was, I think, Division Three. He was still a great wrestler. He's still a great athlete. But maybe his big thing was takedowns. Maybe he just didn't wasn't able to pin people, you know, to make it to that Division One or that elite level of wrestling in college. But, um, you know, his takedowns were on point, man. And, and like I said in, before when we were talking, his experience and his confidence coming off that million-dollar uh, finish there was, I think, just enough. He, he, he knew he was going to win. I don't think he had any doubts. Yeah, that's an interesting point that you make because there, you know, and as jujitsu guys you, and MMA guys, you almost think about wrestling as takedowns. Mm -hmm. Like there's a tendency for you to think about that, but wrestling's like there's obviously so much. more to it, and a lot of it just the mental side and uh, and the strategy of being able to push for two minutes as hard as you can, you know. But I think about a guy like Ben Askren. Ben had great takedowns. Obviously, he had Division One national champion level of takedowns, but that wasn't what made him special. What made him special was his unique groundwork. Mm -hmm. Once the the wrestling match was on the mat, you know, with that funky style, he did things that nobody else was doing. He could drag people into these certain funnels. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a super interesting point. Like, there's way more to wrestling. So saying that somebody's bringing somebody's wrestling accolades over doesn't necessarily translate one-to-one, uh, -one, you know? For sure. And in Pixley being, I say only a pro belt, purple belt's obviously a very skilled belt, but being a purple belt on his back against someone like Nicky Rod, who is one of the best in the world at passing at that weight, that's that's a bad day for anybody. So we knew if he can get him down, it would probably be a, a pretty quick night. But uh, just the fact that he did it twice and, and, and kind of easy, it was like a single leg and he kind of just ran him over twice um, was very surprising to me, for sure. What do you think's next for Nicky Rod, dude? I was thinking about this that night. I'm like, man, he's just killing everybody. And, and you, of course, you you put Gordon in your head. You know, can he beat Gordon now? Now that he's got all this confidence and all these wins and, and all these submissions that he's been getting, he's hitting that next level. Uh, and there's not many next levels for him. Like he's at that next level, that that Gordon esque, you know, uh, level. So for me, and I know he's injured and all that that's the match that makes sense because he's got so much confidence right now. And he, he kind of knows even in their last match where, you know, he almost had the rear naked choke at the very end before the time ran out. Like he, he, he knows he could beat Gordon now. Like 
in his head, if Nicky Rod thinks he's going to beat you, I mean, it's it's a it's a bad day. But there's other guys he could face, you know. Like just, but honestly, I think he's at the top right now. I think he's the next guy for Gordon Ryan that could actually beat him. And I said this. I actually made a video about it on my Instagram. I said the only guy, and this was a year ago, before the million dollar stuff. I said the only guy I think right now that could beat Gordon is Nicky Rod. Like he has that style. And I don't think he thought he could in those last few matches, but but after the last one, I think now he knows he can. And and of course Gordon's is is the best, you know, that maybe has ever done it. Um but for me, as a fan, as as you know, a, a coach, that's what I want to see next. Who knows what the timeline of when Gordon comes back, but what what do you that's think? Do you think there's someone else that's like up in that level between uh, between Nicky Rod and Gordon? Is there someone in that middle level? Well, yeah, I think there's a guy, but he's injured. I think okay. it's Marigali. Marigali, yes, it's, it's got to be Marigali, right? Like to me, that's the only yeah. that's the only like challenge that's left in front of Nikki Rod. That's the only thing that makes sense. Like it, it mm-hmm. can't be Craig. Craig's basically retired. Yeah, um, it's all over the place. And their, and their teammates, right? Um, yeah. And then everybody else that's kind of at the top. That's the problem with the heavyweight class. Like they're the guys at the very top are, of course, elite. But mm-hmm. the talent pool overall is just much, much smaller. Yes. So the, like when you're looking at how what matches do we make, man, you start running out of when you've got the guys that are that much better than everybody and they've already run through the division. It's almost like when Anderson Silva was running through 185 and he kind of yes. like looped everybody, you know what I mean? Got to change weight classes or something. <laughs> yeah, what are you supposed to do? Um, I thought Mason Fowler would would have given him a better match than than man. would show. Like in my head, that was the match for Nikki. Like, man, this guy could beat him. And man, we saw what happened. Like, it was a great match. But but Nikki Rod, you know, he wins. He's a winner. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, you're right. I don't know when he's going to heal or, or um, Marigali, but that would be. He beats Marigali. There's nobody left except Gordon, right? Like the, that. That's the last one. Um, but he's got to stay busy. Like he, he's going to get matched. Like he said at the interview at the, at the end of his match, he's like, just give me whoever will, who will face me. I'm ready. Like anybody. Um, but that, that list is getting small. Yeah. But man, it sets up a great like FPI champions arc for Nicky Rod though, because there really isn't anybody in his way. So he could pop off. I mean, he could pop off like an eight match, 10 match win streak while he's sitting back waiting on Gordon and Mirigali to step up or to heal up. Mm-hmm. True. True. What about Pixley? What do you feel like has to happen now for Pixley? So we got this. That was our first time seeing him at FPI. Obviously, yeah. we saw him at ADCC. And if you if you keep up with the scene, you know who Pixley is for sure. Sure. But what now? Like, do, does he move? Do we do we keep running him back out there for fight pass? Do we make him go do some other stuff and then come back? Like, how do you see that playing out for him? What's the next step in his career? Yeah, I mean, he had all that confidence and all that hype coming in based off the the win over Marigali. I mean, he beat one of the best. He's probably the, one of the best guys in the planet Earth right now doing jujitsu, uh, besides Gordon. And he beat him. You know, he, he injured him and he darsed him and, and all that. And and you know, but but really, he didn't have that experience to beat him. Like that's why this is so insane. Yeah. So I think bringing him back to FPI and just giving him maybe not the best top of the top like Nicky Rods. You know, that would have been a great test. And if he beat Nicky Rod, then, man, this guy is here. But I, th- I don't think he's there yet. You know, there's a reason he's still a purple belt. Uh, and there's a reason, you know, he needs to work more off his back. He, need, he there's, there's obviously holes in his game that were exposed with Nicky Rod. Um, so I would say just give him someone, maybe not at the very top 5% of the world, but somewhere in the middle, like him, you know, like on their way up. And, uh, and definitely bring him back. That guy, you know, he's amazing. And, and I think he has way more to show than what he showed at, at that night. Yeah, I think so too. So yeah, big takeaway for me though, Nikki Rod dominated the wrestling. And I, I actually feel like Nikki Rod, like we said, he gained confidence as it went on. I, I think maybe if I'm looking from the outside, like, oh, that's a defining moment right there. Even though mm-hmm. we already understood that Nikki was a wrestler, maybe yep. we didn't really understand that he could wrestle to that level. So I think that's sure. the big takeaway. Like the storylines are like, what, what's next for Nicky Rod? Is there anybody left for him? Man, it's it's looking thinner and thinner as he just kind of yeah 
shaken everybody else away from the roster. And one cool thing too is I don't know if someone ever has ever done a statistic on Nicky Rod's finishing percentage when he gets the back, but I bet it's pretty, pretty high. damn high. <laughs> like yeah. he puts those arms around your neck. It doesn't matter what's down or where where your head's turned or how your hands are. He squeezes and everybody taps. It's just insane. Like you've seen it over and over and over. He doesn't care. It's just he's got the long, strong arms and he's got that choke and that good squeeze and and he's willing you know, to kill you. He's willing. Yeah. He's willing to pop your teeth through the back yes. of the skull. And yeah, you have to have that to compete at that highest of levels. So, for sure. 